Hi friends, today we're going to be doing a, an acrylic overlay on these extremely bitten and damaged nails. So stay tuned for that because we've got a lot to go over today. And welcome back to my channel my name is Sue I am a nail technician and I make videos on nail stuff pretty much anything nail related in the nail industry so today as you can see we've got these super super short bitten damaged nails um, yeah it's kind of a lot but I'm gonna be going over with you how to do nails like these and how to do them properly and all that stuff so yay so this client here um, again she's a nail biter as you can see not only that but she's a nurse so she's washing her hands using hand sanitizer and even bleach wipes on her hands all the time so her nails and hands really suffer so it's not like she was just being neglectful and you know did this to her nails on purpose it literally is just because she's a nail biter which is a really hard habit to break and the industry she works in doesn't make it any easier so we are going to start off with um, the sanding band here it is a medium sanding band and we're gonna you know like remove the shine from the nails and not only that but I also kind of like exfoliate and re remove the dead skin from the fingertip as well I'd like to give a little background on how I met this client and how she became a client of mine. Um, this client reached out to me on Instagram and I'm just so thankful and grateful because she found me on Instagram out of all the hundreds of thousands of nail accounts there and she saw my work and she decided to reach out to me because she wanted me out of all the other nail techs on Instagram to do her nails so I was super super grateful I've never um, met this girl before or before this appointment or before she you know reached out to me and it just made me feel so good that someone saw my work and they were like oh this is the person that you know I want to go to and this is the person that can help me so that made me feel really great that makes me feel like you know I'm, I'm doing something right so I'm super super grateful the other thing I want to mention is that this client did everything right she you know did her research, went on multiple Instagram accounts, contacted you know me before she booked her appointment to make sure that I was the right fit for her. We had like a mini consultation online. She sent me pictures of her nails, um, told me you know what she was looking for, what she needed, and I told her you know what I can do for her, and it turned out to be a good match. So, if you're in need of a nail tech, especially someone to really help you with your nails, make sure you do your research. Okay, so the second step of the prep work for this client's nails is to go in with a diamond enhancement prep bit. Um, this one has, it's really small and it has like a, a grit on the top of the bit as well so I can really get in there into the cuticle area and sidewall to really exfoliate uh, the dead skin. So I had someone ask me a very interesting question about these nails. They asked me if I charged her, this client, any extra for the set because her nails were um, so damaged. And the answer to that is no. I didn't charge her any extra than I normally would um, any other client. And that's because I didn't feel like I needed to. Um, I'm pretty much doing, if you watch my other videos, I'm doing the same exact prep process on her that I would anyone else, and I do pretty much the same exact process. Um, not only that, but her nails honestly did not take me any more time than it would on um, a client with a little bit more like healthier nails. And um, she also did uh, her set really short, so that even so that took even less time. So I did not feel that I needed to charge her more for this set based off of the condition of her nails. And I'm interested to know like what you all think about that. Like would you charge someone, if you're a nail tech, like would you charge someone extra for, for if their nails are a bit more damaged or do you pretty much keep everything the same? I personally 
kept didn't change the price because I don't know I don't I it, again this, this set honestly didn't take me that long it only took me probably about maybe an hour and a half at the most um, and again uh, I didn't speed up the video or anything like that this is the uh, prep process in um, normal speed and again because her nails are so short they are fairly you know less time consuming to, to work with and because we sculpted them so short they weren't you know time consuming so I don't know let me know what you would do would you charge more for a set on someone with bitten damaged nails or no I don't do it because I don't want people to get discouraged from seeking out you know the help they need for their nails but that's just me I don't know let me know what you think So I'm going in with this finer, tiny like needle type of bit, diamond bit to really get into those sidewalls and uh, cuticle area. Um, yeah. If you're a nail biter and you're watching this, um, I just want you to know that one, you're not alone. I'm a nail biter as well. If I don't have acrylic or some type of hard substance on my nails, I will bite them and yeah. So just know that it's okay. Two, know that nail biting is is a habit, a really hard one to break at that. So when you're going through this journey, this nail journey for healthier nails and you're trying to, you know, change that habit. Just realize that it's not going to happen overnight. If you've been biting your nails, you know, since you were a kid and you're an adult now, changing that behavior is not going to happen overnight. So uh, when you're in that process and that journey of trying not to bite your nails anymore, if you slip up, just know that it's okay. Um, three, I guess I want to say, um, you can like recover from nail biting. Um, in a couple months, once I update this video, we're going to see a dramatic, you know, amount of growth. I mean, as long as she keeps up with her nail appointments and she, you know, tries not to bite them off and things like that, uses cuticle oil, we're going to see results and you can too. And then with this bit, I'm just going to exfoliate, you know, the cuticle area again, and then exfoliate the rest of her fingertip. So everything's all nice and smooth, and there's no dead skin left behind or anything like that. Out of the entire nail set and all the steps that I took for this set, the acrylic application was the most challenging part. Um, I made a couple mistakes here that I've noticed as I was doing her nails and just had to like deal with it and you know fix it as I go. But the first mistake was that for this pinky finger, I came in with too much acrylic. Um, the bead was too big for this nail, and um, I was kind of struggling trying to pretty much like manage the nail and make and you know get it on the nail plate where I needed it to be um, another mistake is that I didn't really know what nail shape I was going with when I placed the acrylic bead on her nail so as you see right here I'm it's kind of like rounded but then I'm like oh no like maybe I should do square and I'm just like pretty much changing the shape like as I go but to make things go smoother um, I should have had in mind what shape I wanted to use first which which um, would be square which is going to be square for the rest of the set so hey it's okay it happens I'm not perfect but again these were um, nails that I've worked on for the first time and they're pretty much you know 
a, a, a quite, not a challenging set, but you know, it's not my average set of nails that I usually do, so I don't think I did too bad for the first time. The third mistake I made with this set during the acrylic application is trying to do everything in one bead. Um, as you can see, still struggling here with getting the acrylic placed on the nail and getting the shape I want. So when I, looking back, and if I get another client like this or when she comes back, um, I would probably do a two bead method instead of a, a trying to do a one bead method that I did. I just don't feel like the acrylic laid as nicely as it could have um, because I did one bead and was like rushing to like get everything in place before the acrylic cured and set in place so yeah Now, when working on her other hand, um, I started to get into more of a flow. So for this pinky finger, I definitely used a, um, I made sure to use a smaller amount of acrylic and use a smaller bead, which I think definitely helped and made things easier for me. And again, her nail, her, the, the, what is it called? The, um, surface area of her nail plate is also very small so you don't need that much acrylic to begin with and they're also not really extending her nail that much so you really only need a tiny bit of acrylic and not only that but I knew which shape I was going with when I placed the acrylic bead down so now I have you know I'm getting my shape uh, in place and it's 
turning out to be a lot easier because I knew exactly what I was doing before I did it. So I think for this nail, I ended up doing, yeah, two beads because I worked kind of like towards like the middle of the nail, got that acrylic on there, shaped it, and then I will go in with the second bead toward, uh, closer towards the cuticle area. But I think her, this is going to be our right, but it's her left hand. I think her left hand came out better than her right hand, um, but just based off the acrylic application because after working on, on the other hand and making the mistakes I did, I kind of corrected those mistakes working on this hand now. So. Out of all the nails on her hands, this middle finger here is the one that I was worried about the most because it isn't like a flat surface, it is kind of raised. This fingernail on her on her hand is the most damaged out of all of them. I think she might have, um, if, you can, if you can see like the, it's like kind of the acrylic or the nail plate is like poking through the acrylic because it's like raised. So I'm thinking that she might have damaged this nail. Uh, maybe like the matrix area or something uh, because it's it just looks it just looks different from the, like the rest of her nails so I was worried that the acrylic would would um, like wouldn't look right on this nail because the text it's like textured and raised but um, that's me showing her you know what it looks like and everything um, I was worried about this nail because I thought it would come out like textured and raised and maybe too thick because her natural nail plate is like raised a bit but I think it came out pretty okay um yeah this one was the this nail was definitely like like the most challenging nail for me to work on but um it came out pretty nice I think so
filed it with the carbide bit. I'm just gonna go back in and kind of shape it again because again, this nail was super thick because I put so much acrylic on it, so I had to kind of shape it twice, but you can see it's, it's starting to come into shape now, so yay. step of the filing process is to go in with that same medium grit sanding band and to um, kind of like file the nails get into that cuticle area a little bit um, kind of remove any like lumps or bumps on the nails I lied this isn't the last step I have one more step with the e-file filing process but this is the second to last step This is the last step of uh, the using the e-file to like file the nails and this is a coarse cone diamond bit and I'm using this pointy part of the bit to really get into that cuticle area to seal in the acrylic in that area to make sure that when the nails grow out it grows out like nice and smoothly and there's not like this big lump and big line of demarcation where the natural nail is and where the acrylic is once the nails grow out. This also helps to prevent any lifting as well.
and after all of that is done i'm just going to go into my hand file again and just you know refine the shape make sure the nails are shaped the way we want it to be shaped that everything is nice and smooth there are no lumps and bumps just make sure her nails look as natural as possible and as nice as possible And the final step is to top coat her nails. She didn't want a color. She actually, she chose a color at first at the beginning of the service, but when she saw the color of the acrylic and how pretty it looked on her nail, she decided to just leave the, uh, the acrylic color as her color. So we just go, went ahead and did a top coat. And, and the acrylic that I'm using for this is uh, Cover Pink by Young Nails. And this is our end result here. I think her nails came out really, really nice. She was very happy and satisfied and with her nails, and I was really happy too. Um, I was really happy she reached out to me so that I could help her. This client did end up coming back for a fill, so stay tuned for my next video so we can see what her nails look like in a couple weeks. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!